two teenagers ride through the street, one on a bike and one on a skateboard. It's Laser and his friend Clay, who shoves the trash cans on the curb. Meanwhile, Joni is in her room playing Scrabble with a boy, while their friend Sasha checks social media on her laptop. The boy, Jai, is clearly interested in her, and so when Sasha suggests Joni hooks up with boys from her school and Joni rejects it, Sasha points out the tension between the two, leaving them alone. Meanwhile, at Clay's house, Clay pressures Laser into doing which riles them up, starting to wrestle. That night, at the dinner table, Laser is still on the restlessness caused by the coke. Nick arrives home and they have a tense moment about Jules buying a truck without letting her know, while the other is let down because she doesn't remember discussing her plans for starting a landscape company. Later, as Joni does the unnecessary chore her mother imposed on her, Laser approaches her about a delicate subject, making a call. She shuts down the idea, as she's worried it'll hurt their mother's feelings. Laser is sick of always putting them first, this is not about them. She ends the conversation, saying he can do it if he wants to when he's 18. But this is really important to Laser, who never acts this moved by anything, which leaves Joni thinking. Jules and Nick continue to discuss the truck, Nick relenting as she doesn't want them to argue. They try to be intimate, but Nick is finding it hard to get in the mood. Meanwhile, Joni searches for her adoption papers in secret, making sure her mothers don't come out of the room. In a sunny garden, Paul carries a basket of produce through a garden to a pickup van, loud rock music playing. At his restaurant, he flirts with the host and carries the produce inside, while taking a call. It's from the adoption agency, and he's informed that his daughter is looking for him, but they can't disclose his identity if he doesn't want to. He's taken aback by the information, as if he hadn't thought of it in years, but agrees for the agency to give his information to his biological daughter. The sweet moment of him smiling, a bit out of breath, is cut by a completely different moment of him being intimate with his girlfriend passionately. He drunkenly discusses it with her, admitting he's curious, but he doesn't know what to do, as it's all too overwhelming. Jules and Joni are playing Scrabble outside when Joni takes a call from Paul, her donor. She walks away from her mum to have some privacy, while nervously having a conversation with him. She lets him know she also has a brother who'd like to meet him. After an awkward conversation, they arrange to meet for a meal. Laser's very excited about meeting their biological father, while Joni keeps her expectations low, as they don't know the guy. Paul nervously but warmly greets them in his restaurant. As everyone's very nervous and the kids don't want to ask him any questions, Paul tries to carry the conversation. He connects immediately with Joni, but every attempt he makes to connect with Laser fails. After the meal, next to Paul's motorcycle, Laser mentions his love for motorcycles and their mom's hate for them, which ends the meeting on a better note for the both of them. Joni is thrilled with Paul, as she thinks he's cool and interesting. But Laser's not so convinced, as he found him to be very self-centered. Paul and his friend Tanya discuss his meeting with the kids, while she has lunch at the restaurant's bar. Paul is really happy about how it went, and very interested in them. Paul's garden worker comes up to him to show him the produce and flirt, making Tanya jealous. Clay and Laser are at the latter's house, in their mom's rooms. Clay is searching through their stuff to look for only finding their toys and the porn movies they watch during their intimate times. But as they're watching it, Jules comes home and, as he's left his bike in the middle of the driveway, she goes to his room to scold him. She opens the door and finds the boys watching the movie. Laser has a discussion that has been long overdue for their moms. They want him to know that they accept him and love him unconditionally. A misunderstanding ensues as they want to know if he's gay, but he has no idea what's on their mind. When they ask him if he's seeing someone, he admits to it. But to his mom's shock, it's not a boyfriend, but their sperm donor. The moms sit Joni and Laser down, letting them know they're not upset, and just want to be included in their life. Joni wants to see Paul again, which surprises everyone, including Laser. The women put the condition that the kids are not meeting with Paul alone until they meet him. Paul arrives on his loud motorcycle, wearing a leather jacket and sunglasses. Jules and Nick greet him at home, and the meeting starts on a good note, as he's brought them a fine bottle of wine. But Jules is very uncomfortable. The women have a tense moment as Jules tells her not to overdo it with the wine, and she retorts Jules should also go easy with the micromanagement. The meal occurs with some awkward moments, as the mothers are a bit judgmental and tense, but ultimately it goes well, as everyone wants to get along for the kids. The moms create an uncomfortable moment when they pressure Joni to read her graduation speech for Paul. Paul extends an olive branch when he asks Jules if she would be able to work with him on a project for her garden, which she accepts, hesitant at first but then optimistic and grateful. At a garden store, the couple shop for stuff for the job, and bicker about Jules accepting the job, but in the end Nick wants to be supportive of her. Jules goes to Paul's orchard, and they discuss the landscaping plan. At one point she stares at him, and after a few moments she apologizes, she just sees a lot of her children's expressions on him. Paul's presence in their lives start to cause friction between Nick and everyone else. As Jules and Laser are playing ping pong outside, she goes to them to ask Jules about how her job is going. Jules is ambiguous, whether because she feels uncomfortable sharing her work with her, or because she feels something private about her time with Paul. 
When Nick switches her attention to Laser to ask him to do an unnecessary task, he gets annoyed and goes inside the house, leaving the game with Jules, who gets irritated at Nick because of it. Laser and Clay hang out again, although this time Paul is with them while they film a skateboard stunt, in which Clay gets injured. Paul brings Clay home, and tells Laser the same thing as his mom's, he doesn't think he's a good person, or a good friend to Laser. Laser avoids the subject, and instead asks him why he donated sperm. He tries to make a joke, but as Laser is serious, he says he did it to help people. He looks at Laser meaningfully, while saying he's glad he did it. At home, Nick draws a bath for Jules, with candles, scents and soap. She's thankful about how patient Jules has been with her, knowing she's been difficult, and is sorry about it. She gives her a foot rub and remembers she's forgotten the lavender bath salts, and she'll be back in a minute. But she never comes back, and Jules finds her in the kitchen, drinking wine and speaking on the phone with a patient, which greatly disappoints Jules. At Paul's home, he offers Jules some pie and they chat about the project. She doesn't want to eat too much pie, as she's self-conscious about her body, which he compliments. When discussing the project, she's very insecure about how he sees her work, and confesses Nick can be really critical of her. Paul praises her talent, and they stare at each other in silence for a moment, then interrupted by one of her workers. She then announces she's leaving, and has a friendly fight with Paul over him insisting on her taking the pie home, and her rejecting him, which ends with them kissing. Jules finally goes back home, and Wee Nick asks her about her day with Paul. She is touchy and defensive, changing the subject to composting. Joni is gardening with Paul, who offers her his hat to protect her face from the sun. Nick calls, and Joni complains about her smothering behavior. Paul defends her, that's her job as a mom. She would like for Nick to treat her as an adult. Paul smiles and is supportive about it, if she wants things to be different, she has to make that happen herself. That's her job. Laser and Clay walk through a rough neighborhood, Clay saying he finds Paul to be very weird and lame, using slurs. They find a stray dog, and as Laser pets him, Clay laughs and says they should pee on his head. Laser tells him to quit it, but as Clay is actually trying to attempt it, telling Laser to hold the dog, Laser makes the dog run away. Clay, in return, calls him a slur and punches him. Instead of getting in a fight, maybe thinking he can't win, Laser takes the skateboard and leaves. Meanwhile, Paul gives Joni a ride home on his motorbike, which she enjoys. Meanwhile, at the house, Nick is worried about Joni not being back, and when she arrives on Paul's motorcycle, she goes to the curb to reprimand her. But Joni is done with her mother imposing her beliefs on her, and so patronizingly rejects her mother's scolding and goes inside. It's Nick's last straw when Paul tries to give her parenting advice, and she lashes out at him, storming off afterward. Jules doesn't say anything to stand up for her wife, just gives Paul an apologetic look before following her inside. The next day, Paul stares lustily at Jules working in the garden. To the amusement of Louis, Jules's worker. Jules goes inside the house and nervously approaches Paul. She's embarrassed about Nick's behavior the previous night. Paul brushes it off, saying it's not her fault, and Jules unconvincingly tries to defend her. They stare at each other, unsure how to act, and Jules acknowledges the elephant in the room by mentioning the other day's kiss. They try to play it out as if it's not a big deal, but the tension is palpable, and they kiss passionately. As he intensifies the kiss, grabbing her desperately, she tries to interrupt him, as she has her worker waiting for her in the garden. But overcome with lust, Jules wraps her legs around his waist and Paul carries her into the bedroom. Despite his affair with their mother, Paul keeps hanging out with the kids as a fatherly presence. He shoots hoops with laser and answers his always intense, out of the blue questions. He invites Joni and her friend Sasha to have dinner at his restaurant. Meanwhile, the tension between Nick and Jules doesn't relent. Having dinner with friends, Jules brings out Paul in the conversation, which annoys Nick, who's drinking nonstop. Nick is sick of talking about Paul, and when the conversation shifts to organic food, she rudely interrupts her friends, criticizing the sustainable lifestyle trend. Jules is embarrassed, and when she tries to have Nick switch to non-alcoholic drink, it's Nick's last straw, and she just leaves the table. Jules goes to find Nick at the bar. They argue about many aspects of their lives. Nick is frustrated at how everyone's spending more time with Paul than with her, while she exhausts herself to support the whole household. But Jules argues that's how she likes it, as she loves having the control of everything. The argument intensifies, but ultimately ends on a sad note, as Nick asks for the check. After having sex, Paul and Jules lie together in bed, cuddling and bantering. Paul picks up a call, it's Joni, and as Paul chats with her as if nothing were happening, and Joni hears her mom is there, Jules quickly dresses up and goes outside. Her worker Louis is there, so paranoid and stressed that he might know about the situation. Jules fires him, leaving him confused, as he doesn't know what he did wrong. Later, Nick looks around the table, feeling like a pariah. She clears the air, acknowledging Paul's presence in their lives has been hard for her, causing friction between her and everyone else. And as she wants things to be better, and to support the kids, she suggests arranging to meet Paul for dinner so she can get to know him better, and so she can see Jules's work in his garden. The children nod, not showing much emotion, but accepting their mom's olive branch, and Jules just fakes a smile to appease her wife. Jules swears and complains as she works hard in Paul's garden. 
Paul offers to give her a hand, and they carry a heavy plant together in awkward silence. Paul stares at her, waiting for her lead. Jules finally blurts they can't continue with their affair, which Paul knows. After agreeing it's terribly wrong of them, we then see them in bed, staring at the ceiling. Jules is angry and disgusted at herself, and Paul tries to calm her down. As she ignores him, he finally confesses he's falling in love with her. She brushes him off and gets up to take a shower, washing away the evidence. We see Paul's commitment and the authenticity in his confession next, as he rejects the advances of Tanya, explaining he wants something real and lasting. The family packs up in the van and heads to Paul's, Jules terribly anxious. Jules tours Nick around the backyard, looking a little freaked out as she shows her the work she's been doing. Nick is supportive and proud of her, which surprises Jules, who appreciates it, but is muffled by the guilt it causes her. While the kids cook dinner with Paul, Nick flips through Paul's album collection, including Joni Mitchell's Blue, her first connection to Paul. Everyone digs into the meal, enjoying themselves, especially Nick, who's committed to redeeming herself. When Paul offers her wine, knowing she loves it, she politely rejects it, saying she'll stick to water. Nick then compliments the food, and has an overly cheerful exchange with Paul about cooking. Overcompensating for her past behavior, she hogs the conversation, interrupting Joni when she tries to join in. She mentions the Joni Mitchell albums in his collection. Nick loves her so much, she named her daughter after her. They have the same favorite album of her, and they awkwardly but good-spiritedly high-five across the table. Nick even starts singing one of the songs, causing everyone to stare at her in disbelief. But as Paul is easygoing, and is clearly trying to make her feel comfortable, he sings along with her. But he can't keep up with her clear memory of the lyrics and her passion, and she sings the last verse alone, almost crying. Nick stops, eyes still closed. She's connected to a part of herself she rarely lets herself visit. The moment is punctured by Laser, who cheekily advises her not to quit her day job. But Paul cuts off his cynicism, arguing it's cool his mom opened her heart like that, as it is hard enough. Laser agrees and apologizes sincerely to Nick, causing her surprise and appreciation of Paul's influence. She declares she likes him, and as she's finally relaxed, she agrees to have some wine, getting up to use the bathroom. Nick washes her hands at the sink. Something catches her eye. She lifts Paul's hairbrush from the shelf in front of her and examines it. She reaches into the bristles and pales as she extracts a few strands of long, red hair. She kneels next to the shower drain, pulling a clump of telltale red hair from the drain. She gets out of the bathroom and makes her way to the bedroom, pulling pillows off Paul's bed. Her look tells us she's found hair here as well. Nick sits back down at the table. She looks drained, but nobody notices. The sound drops out. Paul and Jules talk comfortably, with Joni and Laser chiming in, smiling, one big happy family. The voices are muffled, as she's totally disconnected and shell-shocked. Back home, Jules is doing her nightly routine when Nick comes into the bathroom. As Jules comments how well she and Paul seem to get along, Nick cuts her off, bluntly asking if she's sleeping with Paul. Freaked out, trying to play it cool, Jules asks her what she's talking about. But Nick is having none of it. She found her hair everywhere. Jules tries to justify the shower hair, but has no excuse as to why there was hair on Paul's bed. Jules pauses a second too long. The truth has come out. Nick is so angry she's calm, while Jules is desperate. Jules tries to make excuses, but she honestly has no arguments. She cheated on her wife, not being able to sort out her problems in a mature way, and with their sperm donor, who had been making Nick terribly uncomfortable. When Nick opens the door to go get water, Joni and Laser are on the other side, devastated. They've been listening to the whole thing. Jules goes to spend the night on the couch, but she can't sleep. She tries to talk to her kids, who are in bed, but Joni is furious and Laser just dismisses her. Nick also ignores her the next morning in the kitchen, on her way to work. While Joni and Sasha talk about the situation in her room, Joni's cell rings. She looks at the phone, seeing Paul's picture. She answers the phone, immediately starting to tell him off. She's disgusted at his hypocrisy, acting so cool and nice, while having an affair with her mom. Paul tries to explain the situation, and even asks to meet to talk about it. But Joni hangs up on him, crying to Sasha. Paul is heartbroken, rejecting his flirty worker's advances. Next, Jules's phone rings while she's alone outside, smoking a cigarette. He's desperate, and Jules tiredly explains how her hair shedding betrayed them. Paul proposes that they take the situation as an opportunity, they should get together, get the kids together, and be a family. He wants it, and he's ready, but Jules cuts his fantasy off, she's gay, and he's delusional. She hangs up the phone in frustration. Joni and Sasha are at a party, in someone's backyard. Joni is drinking heavily, and when Sasha suggests she slow down, Joni argues she's fine. She sees her friend Jai across the yard, chatting with a girl who's clearly interested in him. She walks up to interrupt them and, much to the girl's annoyance, leads Jai to a private corner. She kisses him, and he sweetly reciprocates. The kiss quickly turns into something more intense, 
full of need, and Joni suddenly pulls away and leaves, leaving Jai confused. Jules comes into the bedroom to get another pillow, complaining about the couch's discomfort, implying she wants to sleep in the bed. But Nick just suggests she takes a painkiller. A noise interrupts them, someone arriving at the house. Jules walks downstairs to find Joni stumbling toward her bedroom. She interrogates her about the party and about her being drunk. Nick joins in, worried that she drove home on her own while drunk. But Joni angrily dismisses both of them, even calling Nick an alcoholic. She finally lashes out, pointing out how she always did everything they wanted, and it's never been enough for them. Jules tries to scold her, as she is still her mother, but Joni won't even let her touch her, and slams the door in their face. As the sun rises on the home, Jules wakes up again on the couch, and Joni packs for college. She picks up a pile of clothes from the corner, sees the farmer's hat Paul gave her and puts it aside, not sure what to do with it. The family has their last supper before Joni leaves, achieving some normalcy. The doorbell rings, and Joni gets up to get it, it's Paul. Joni walks out for privacy, and closes the door behind her. She's angry, but she is willing to listen to him. Paul remorsefully apologizes for what he did. Joni just wants to know if what they had, their bond, was all a farce. Paul struggles to keep his emotions together, as he insists he truly cares for her and laser, and wants to be in their life. Joni is sad about what he ruined, she just wishes he was a better person. They look up at each other when the door suddenly flings open. Nick is there, fuming. Joni ducks back inside, and Nick confronts the man who formed a relationship with her whole family, only to have sex with her wife and her- Jules joins Nick, concerned things are getting out of hand. Paul tries to explain his good intentions, and express his genuine desire to have a family, but Nick makes it clear for him, if he wants a family, he should form his own. Paul stands alone, spinning. After a moment, he spontaneously looks back into the house. Laser is staring at him through the window. Their eyes lock, and Paul gives Laser a contrite smile, attempting a connection. That's the final straw for Laser. He grabs his plate and walks out of view. Shaken and breathless, Paul heads for his motorcycle, reeling in the hell of his own making. Losing it, he hurls the helmet at the motorcycle. Later, as Joni and Nick are watching TV, Jules walks in front of them, picks up the remote, and turns off the TV. She has something to say. Laser holds his mum's hand, and Joni sits near her. It's clearly them against Jules, who stands in front of them. She starts her speech, trying to be stoic but barely holding it together. The kids may not understand, but marriage is hard and challenging. When you've been with someone for so long, sometimes you stop seeing them as a person, and you project your doubts and dissatisfactions with life on them. And when you make stupid choices, it's not about you alone anymore. And sometimes, for some reason, you hurt the people you love the most, more than anyone else. And she loves the kids, and she loves Nick. She just hopes someday they can all forgive her. And, without further ado, Jules hands the remote back to Laser and leaves the room. Everyone's silenced by Jules's rambling apology, especially Nick, who cries silently, holding her kids. The next morning, Nick and Jules stuff the last of Joni's things in the back of their station wagon. Laser and Joni bring the last of the boxes out of the house, and they head to Joni's university in thoughtful silence. As they drive past buildings and dorms, Joni sees students swarming the campus. She takes it all in, nervous and excited. Nick and Jules still looks at Joni, protective and a bit anxious. In her dorm room, Nick and Jules want to help her get settled, starting to put boxes around and getting the linens for her bed. Joni stands among her bags and boxes, looking around. But Joni stops them, insisting she's got it. The mothers finally listen to her and leave the room. Joni goes and pulls out the linens and starts making her bed, but suddenly stops midway. She stares out toward the hallway, weirded out by the silence, and looks out, realizing her family has left. Joni exits, looking around to find her family. The station wagon is gone, which alarms her. Her pace quickens as she makes her way down a hill toward the road, where the family van finally shows up. The car pulls over to the curb and everyone gets out. Joni clearly was worried, but she tries to be casual about the fact she thought they had left. Turns out they just had to move the car, they couldn't have left without saying goodbye. Suddenly everyone realizes, this is it, the moment to say goodbye has come. Laser is the first one to step up and hug Joni goodbye, trying to be light about how he's gonna miss her. Then the moms both come up and hug Joni together, tears streaming down their faces. Joni tries to detach from the hug, but her moms won't let go, and slowly their tears begin to break Joni down. Her feelings finally improve and she starts crying, letting her walls down, comforted by her mother's. After a few moments the hug breaks apart, and Joni gives her moms one last smile. Laser, Jules, and Nick get back in the car. Joni stands, watching as they drive off and her new life begins. The drive home is silent, as everyone is lost in their thoughts. Finally, Laser breaks the silence with a blatant observation, they shouldn't break up. This surprises the moms, who ask him why he thinks that. Laser, in his usual way, just comments they're too old. His dryness makes his mom smile, and when Jules reaches out her hand to Nick's lap, she doesn't reject her. They hold hands, which Laser is grateful for, looking at the road in front of them. 